Okay, so as we continue our discussion of EER or envelope elimination and restoration, we're going to start talking about polar modulation. So first let's look at generic vector modulation. Uh, this is where we have some information bearing signal that we represent as a Cartesian symbol. In other words, our modulating signal is represented by some I of T plus J Q of T. And this is of course, randomly modu modulated information. And generally we have a few of these that we use in communications such as QAM, QPSK or OFDM to name a few. So here we're modulating the carrier waveform, which we're representing by this E J omega T. So if we convert this to polar, we just need to do a vector transformation from the Cartesian coordinate system to the polar coordinate system. So in the polar coordinate system, A of T, the amplitude vector is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the Cartesian components, I and Q and phi of t, the phase modulated vector, is equal to the inverse tangent of q over i. We can represent this graphically. So here we have a vector represented as the sum of i of t and q of t. Here we can see that we can represent that Cartesian vector uh, in i of t and q of t as a of t with an angle of phi of t. And if we rewrite our expression for the generic vector modulation in the polar domain, it would look like the following. A of t e to the j times the quantity omega t plus phi of t. So a basic question is, how do we realize polar vector construction in circuits? So let's look at a signal that has maybe some amplitude modulation and phase modulation in it. If a circuit has amplitude modulation, it will have an envelope. And the RF carrier waveform might fit inside of this envelope. The RF carrier waveform is at a much higher frequency than the envelope. And if there's phase modulation, we can have things like phase transitions where there's a phase change whenever we have a zero crossing of the envelope. Now phase modulation can also show as really subtle shifts in, the, in where the, the edge of, or the zero crossing of one of these carrier waveforms happens. So let's look at basic AM modulation. So here our AM modulated signal, S of T is equal to one plus M of T times C of T, where one plus M of T is the modulation or information waveform and C of T is the carrier waveform. So here I've got a sine wave doing the modulation, AM cosine omega D of T, and the carrier waveform is A cosine omega C of T. We'll assume that the data waveform has a bandwidth that's much smaller than the carrier waveform. Another way to state that is that the period of the data waveform is longer than the period of the carrier waveform. So if we want to separate this, all we need to do is low pass filter. But we only need the positive part of the envelope, and so we also want to rectify. So let's look at a basic circuit that can do this signal separation of just the amplitude or envelope component. So here we have a diode acting to rectify the signal and then a low pass filter acting to select only the amplitude modulation portion of the waveform and reject the carrier wave portion of the waveform. So how do we choose values for R and C? Well, for this low pass filter, we know that the pass band of the low pass filter is equal to one over two pi times RC. So generally, we just want to make sure that the pass band of the filter is greater than the data bandwidth, but is less than 
the carrier bandwidth, and it needs to be significantly less than the carrier bandwidth. This will allow us to select only the data of the signal and reject the carrier information of the signal. Now in CMOS, there aren't very many good diodes, uh, so we have to find a few different ways to realize this selection circuit. And in the next lecture, we'll look at that. So please remember to like and subscribe uh, and provide any feedback that I can use to improve the videos. Thanks.